Hello everyone. I'm Lisa De Nicolitz and I've been part of the writing scene for the past 15 years or so and since the advent of social media so much has changed. It's impossible to keep track of things and I began to feel slightly psychotic reading newsletters, tweets, Facebook posts and the like and my brain began to feel shaken up like a snow globe. So my first instinct was to run away from it all but then I returned to our fallback position, which is, obviously, to share, hence this podcast. And as with all things, this podcast might morph a little differently down the line, but right now I'd like to welcome you to I Read Somewhere That. So, I read somewhere that. Isn't that always the way? You read a thing and then you can't remember where you read it, but it made you think. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read random snippets that jumped out at me. And I'm not going to get bogged down by where I read them or who said it or why they said it. Because this isn't a bibliography or essay that needs footnotes. It's just a collection of crazy stuff. And life just seems so crazy and random right now. So it just seems fitting. Anyway, here we go. Here are a few things. Another big surprise has been the sheer volume of books published every year. About 300,000 annually in North America and closer to a million if you count self-published books. Yes, a lot of them are crap, but there are audiences for crap. The high volume of books produced by conventional publishers and self-publishers has also served to reduce author incomes for everybody save the Obamas. The pie gets a little bigger every year, but there are many more authors sharing it. Next one. I had an idea at the outset that Amazon was huge and important in the book world, but I didn't realize how huge and how variously important. It must be selling 60% of books in North America right now, and its share of ebooks and audiobooks is way higher. On the positive side, and there are positives, Amazon is straightforward to deal with. In t- its terms for physical book sales are decent, it pays the bills, it doesn't order more copies than it needs, resulting in fewer returns, and it helps you reach millions of potential buyers that would otherwise be impossible to reach. On the much longer negative side, the terms on which it sells ebooks and audiobooks are unfair, and in my opinion, and bear in mind, this is not my opinion, this is something that I read, it's an abuse of its market market dominance. If you want to sell your eBooks on a platform other than Amazon, you have to double Jeff Bezos' commission. Amazon also cheats by selling and delivering books, especially hot selling books below cost, to the detriment of other booksellers. Lots more on its nasty practicing, prices practicing out there. Uh, Next one. Interestingly, and I have to say this I found fascinating. Interestingly, nobody knows how to advertise a book. Ads in conventional media don't move copies. Ads in social media can be effective, but I haven't seen anyone win at it consistently. Ads on Amazon are at best modestly effective. We've talked to a lot of people and worked with a number of specialists and the results are always disappointing. So that was was kind of an interesting but sad one. Wow. Uh, Next one. And this was a positive one. There are many excellent reasons to take the time to write and publish a book. Having authored a book gives you instant credibility as an expert, and that immediately sets you apart from everyone else in your field. It helps to fill your pipeline with perfect clients and gives you a reason to raise your rates. End of quote. Hmm. Actually, I'm not quite sure about that one, but (laughs) that's just me. (laughs) This one I thought was kind of funny. Looking back, I imagine I was always writing. Twaddle it was too, but far better to write twaddle or anything than nothing at all. This one popped up in a newsletter, which I, it really resonated with me. Then of course, there's always the problem that no matter what you do, People will recognize themselves in your fiction, even if you're not writing about them at all, even if they bear no resemblance to your story or the characters. 
Women are rarely given the benefit of the doubt as to whether their work is fiction or non-fiction, end quote. And I have to admit, I've come across this a lot. I'm the author of 10 books, and along the way, everybody has always assumed they are in the books and that I am the protagonist, regardless. Uh, next up, I really love this one, and this is one you've probably heard a lot before. Fiction is the lie through which we tell the truth. Followed by this one, not by the same author, of course. They say if you can turn bad things into a story, then you've survived them, which I found interesting. And I'd like to end up with this one, which was a tweet I saw that really resonated with me. People think that being a writer means you write all day, when re in reality, it's more like 10% writing, 10% publicity stuff, 10% grant apps, 10% answering emails and chasing down money, 10% reading other people's work for blurbs, etc. 50% working the other jobs that pay your bills. End of quote. And I thought that was pretty accurate. So that's it for this episode, The Maiden Voyage, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll be sure to pop back soon with more buzzy snippets and fascinating facts from the book world. Have a great day. Bye.